Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about flyweight design pattern. Flyweight design pattern is also one of the design pattern from the gang of four design patterns. Flyweight design pattern is a structural design pattern and the main intent of this pattern is to use sharing to support large number of fine-grained object efficiently. Meaning if you have an application where the same object is used multiple times then instead of creating the object every single time you can share the object across multiple operation to get efficiency both in terms of memory as well as CPU. This design pattern is extremely important when you are building a client-side application especially if you are building a mobile application using C Sharp and Xamarin or if you are building a web-based application in some other programming languages. When it comes to server-side programming not every time we are so conscious about memory and CPU it's because first of all the object lifetime of web-based applications are anyway small because you can declare something as scoped to a particular HTTP request and when the request is served the object will be taken out of memory and eventually garbage collected. That's one reason and the other reason is memory on the server is cheap and easily available which is not the case for a client app for example an application running on a mobile device. Similarly CPU is also very easily and cheaply available on server which is not the case for a mobile client but nonetheless this is a very important design pattern and can be and should be used where it makes sense now if you are just creating an object five times or six times I think it's an overkill to use this design pattern but imagine a scenario where you are creating hundreds of the same object again and again and again this is where this design pattern will be extremely handy so for today's discussion we are going to talk about a scenario and let's say there is an application which is used for showing the location of car and Consider that this application is a distributed application and it keeps all the car's information in memory on some sort of server. And if that application is served to hundreds or thousands of users, creating a car object every single time will take a lot of memory. And that is the case where flyweight design pattern will come in handy. Let's open the C sharp code and let's say this is the interface which we are going to be dealing with. We have a car which has has two properties color and engine and then there's a set location which is used to set the location of the car meaning where the car right now in a map there are two different state of this object first state is kind of a static state which is the color in engine and once it is set it is not going to change throughout the lifetime of a particular object whereas the location which is the latitude and longitude where the car is currently is going to change based on the context based on where the car is right now so when you design flyweight design pattern this is what we have to segregate uh, intrinsic data which is the information that does not change based on a context and the extrinsic data which is the information which changes based on context and in flyweight design the class or the interface which saves the incentric data is what is called as flyweight and in our case it is the class which will derive from icar is what the flyweight is and then we'll create a contextual object which will be responsible for saving the contextual state of the object which is lat and long. Now one other thing to keep in mind if your class just has like two or three properties which means it's anyway very lightweight again flyweight might be an overkill. It should be used only in case of objects which are heavy and they are expensive both in terms of memory and CPU during creation. So in this case I kept it simple just for the simplicity of the example but this is something to keep in mind when you use this particular design pattern. Now in this case we have iCar and from iCar I created two classes. One is a BMW car which implements these two interfaces which are set as a part of the constructor and then set location just prints out the location along with the car and the engine for the BMW car. Similarly we have an Audi car which is very similar. So in this case as you can see just from these two classes the idea here is all the BMW cars will share the same car object. 
instead of creating a new BMW car every time when someone has a BMW car and they want to see where their car is. Whereas the late and long of the car is something which will be managed outside and that is what will change for every single consumer of this application. So these are the flyweight objects and how do we ensure that there is only one instance of each of this class? Well, there are a couple of ways to do it. The traditional way of doing it is through a factory. So here I created an iCar factory. In the iCar factory, I have a dictionary which has a car and when someone calls get car, it checks if the car exists in this dictionary, then returns. If not, it just creates a car and then adds it to the dictionary and then returns as simple as that. This will ensure that a type of car is created only once. And here we're going to keep the car factory as a singleton class so that there is only one instance of this particular class. So this is the factory which will be used to create the car to ensure there is one single instance. And then finally we need some sort of manager for the car which is going to manage the car itself and maintain the extrinsic data or the contextual data in our case which is going to be latitude and longitude. So for that what we can do is we can create a new class and we can call it something like the car manager. And here what we are going to have is the car manager is going to have a constructor and the constructor is going to take the type of the car and then what we can do is we can have a private read only car car and we'll have car is equal to and let's inject the i car factory also let's say car factory dot get car of type that's about it. And then here, what we can also have is, we can have private simul let and longitude, these two. And then we can have public void set location. And here we are going to have longitude and when this is called all we are going to do is we are going to set the and let's set these values zero a startup value and here we can take the incoming values and select equal to that longitude equal to incoming longitude and then what we can do is we can say car dot set location and then we can pass the lat and long. So as you can see here, this class essentially is the class which is managing the contextual state. So every time a location is set, it is maintaining what is the current location and then it is just passing that location to the car to print it out. Now, if you are dealing with a web-based application and this is your server, when this set location happens, you might be sending out a WebSocket message through SignalR at this point in time so that the location of car is visible somewhere in the map. But for simplicity, we are just printing it out here in console.writeLine. So now the car manager essentially is going to set it up and consider the scenario where if we did not had flyweight then all we are going to do is we are going to create the instance of BMW car like 500 times and here as I mentioned here it might not be a big deal because we just have two properties but if we had 100 of properties it's going to take up a lot of memory whereas for the car manager given the car manager will be created multiple times but since the car manager does not have anything except this two attributes the actual size of the car manager will be minuscule compared to if you had to create it 100 cars so that's where the advantage of flyweight design pattern comes in now that we have that let's create an let's create an interface for iCar manager and now let's go and in the startup first let's add the 
services dot add singleton and we are going to add i car factory car factory this is the first one and as you can see the car factory is it has to be a singleton class and then the next thing is we want to use the car manager now let's use it in the controller i'm going to use the default controller which comes in instead of changing anything here and here we can have i car manager array car managers let's define this and here we are going to call for each each car manager car manager dot set location for that long let's do one thing let's declare So we'll increment after every set and let's move this to the end. Okay, so I'm keeping this. I don't want to change the implementation here. So that's all we are doing here. We are setting the location. Now it expects a car manager. So let's go into the startup. And here what we can do is, and this can be also a single turn. This is an array. The new car manager array. And here we can pass new car manager. The type is BMW, comma. And here let's use this format so that we can do x dot get service of i car factory so it sends the car factory from the container and then let's create a few of those so a couple of bmw couple of audi and then if we run this application now as you can see it printed out a couple of BMW and a couple of Audi. Now here, as I mentioned, the example is pretty simple and straightforward, but as you can see, it shows the main concept of flyweight design pattern where the Audi car and the BMW car are the flyweights where they contains the attributes or properties which does not change based on the context. Whereas car manager is a class which manages the properties of the class which changes based on context in this case which is latitude and longitude and as i mentioned earlier in terms of number of instances it's not going to change because you will have if you need 20 instance of Audi car, you will have 20 car managers and one Audi car. So in terms of instances, it will be always N plus one, which is one more than what you would have needed if you would not use the flyweight design pattern. So if your main flyweight class has very less attribute, this design pattern is not going to be of any help. But if your class is heavy, it has a lot of properties in it, it will end up taking a lot of memory if you create hundreds of the instance, then yes, flyweight design pattern is very helpful and very handy. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.